Hi, welcome back to Pia Tech Talk. Today we're going to continue with the ThreadX uh, that I started in the last video. And in this episode I'm going to look into binary semaphores and how you can use that to uh, interact from a task if, uh, and uh, see if there is an interrupt coming in. So I hope you find this interesting and uh, tag along. So I will be continuing on, on the last project. So if you haven't seen that video and you don't have that file yet, uh, take a look at that one first and uh, create the project. So I, I took that project and I made some changes to it. So we start by enabling the, or uh, starting the, uh, th th the cube MX and doing that by clicking on the ThreadX1 IOC file. Then we open up the cube MX. So the cube MX have started and if we go under system core uh, and GPIO, we can see that I now have a PC13 and that pin is up here. And that pin is the user button. There is a blue button on the board and that is connected to the PC13. And that creates an interrupt. So uh, we have uh, created an interrupt for that one. So whenever we have, a, uh, when we push down this one, it, you get an uh, interrupt with it on the, it says external interrupt mode with rising edge trigger detection. So that one we need to do because the, the thing that we are going to do is today that we had three tasks and all three tasks uh, had a blinky on uh, one blinky each uh, with different times. I think it was one second, two seconds and three seconds. So we have the yellow, red and the green LED. So all three tasks. So we will re be remaining the task one and the task two. We won't uh, fiddle with those, but we will look into the task three. And the task three uh, will be waiting for, for the, this button to be pressed. So we will generate an interrupt when this button is pressed. And uh, then you will get, release the semaphore and uh, the task three will then continue taking the semaphore and releasing that one. and. Uh, do what it needs to do. So um, it will be waiting for us to push down the button. So that is a way to synchronize an interrupt with a task event. And uh, I will also do some communication on the serial ports. So I took the USART 3 and enabled that one. So when we had uh, made those project changes, we can just uh, generate the changes for us. So now it has generated the changes and we can uh, open the main C file. And in, if we go to the very top, uh, we can see that we need to make some changes to this project. We need to include uh, stdio.h and the reason for this is that we are going to use printf and uh, it requires this one. So include that under uh, private includes. Then we can also see in the private variables that we now have a handler to our UART3. So it's huart 3 uh, That is a new one. And uh, you also can see that we have the private function prototypes for the USART here as well. Then under user code begin zero, there is some code that I have uh, pasted here. So this is code for enabling printf. So there is a define use UART printf and void. I put uh, I can put this code in the in the comment below. So this is a nifty piece of code that you can just put here in uh, uh, in user begin zero. And if we then go further down, uh, what we see here uh, under user code begin two. I have, uh, I'm using TerraTerm and I would like to have the screen cleared when I start a new debug session. So uh, I printf this command and I flush the standard out so uh, the, the terminal will be blank. And then I just write the command here waiting for user button to be pressed uh, to set a semaphore. 
After that, uh, we release everything to the ThreadX and uh, we, we leave this main C file. But before we do that, we also said that we had an interrupt button, uh, the user button that generates an interrupt on uh, interrupt 13. So we need to have a callback for that one. So we put the callback as usual under section 4, to, um, under section 4 so user code begin 4. So here we said that we had an interrupt on the rising edge. So here we have the uh, HAL GPIO X the external interrupt rising edge callback. And uh, what I do here, I first of all check what button had uh, what uh, what caused it because it can be more than just this button that generates an interrupt. So I will make sure that uh, I only act on uh, this button if I have other interrupt session. Uh, but if you don't have anything else, you can just uh, use this command unused GPIO. If you don't use anything, you will get an error due to that you have uh, this uh, argument up here as well. So I'm just checking if the GPIO pin, uh, that means this pin, equals my user button pin. And the user button pin is what I declared in the uh, cubemx. So when I, if it's that, then I will just write pin. Uh, that means that I will turn on the LED. And uh, so I want to toggle it and I want to turn it off. I will just turn it on. And then I will put semaphore. So uh, I have a semaphore called semaphore zero. And uh, then, then I just make a put on this one. So I increase the semaphore with one. And for this one, I also forgot that uh, we need to have an, uh, this uh, declared. So I had it here. External TX semaphore uh, declared in the use to begin private variables. And the reason for me making it external is that it's uh, declared from the first beginning in the uh, app thread x.c, which we were going to change to now. So those were the changes that we needed to make to the main C file. So if we go back to the app thread dot x uh, app thread x dot c sorry it's a mouthful uh, I don't think that we made any changes here what we did here is that we add a private variable and for this routine routine so the tx semaphore uh, sorry not the private it's a variable so tx semaphore is that the semaphore zero which I said uh, was declared in this file and we just uh, made it external here. Then we have our three uh, prototypes. We won't change anything there. But here under app thread x init, here I actually created the uh, semaphore. So we haven't created it until now. So we first of all create the three uh, tasks and we have out start on all three of them. And then we create the semaphore with TX semaphore create. And then we have the pointer to what semaphore and that is the semaphore zero. And the semaphore zero we have declared up here. And we just give it an, a name that we can then uh, use in uh, in the in debugging so we can see if we have several semaphores and we give it an initial value of zero you can actually give it the higher value if you would like to hear really here when you are uh, declaring it but i declare it with zero so that is what we need to do here and then we go down to our, our threads and here we have thread one we don't do anything so what does do, do? It uh, just toggled the LED with 100, uh, with one second's uh, interval. And uh, thread 2 does the same. It just toggled another LED with uh, twice the uh, due to cycle, so two seconds. Uh, but in the LED 3 thread, here we made some changes to it. First of all, I had some variables up here. And the reason for me setting up this variable is that 
this uh, status here uh, I would like mainly for seeing how and uh, how it works so you can actually uh, find out the status of the semaphore so you can get out some details here you don't need to have it and if you uh, remove this of course then you don't need this either um, so here we have a while one loop so we stop here with trying to get the semaphore and if the semaphore is set to zero you can't get it uh, then you will need to wait and how long will you wait yeah you will wait forever so you will stop here immediately and uh, you can also see how this is the semaphore zero which we declared above so as soon as this comes to here it will stop it won't do anything else and then uh, the 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 um, Autos will then take the, the time slot when this times out and go up to these instead. And um, if it finds a semaphore uh, and it comes further on, and why should it do that? Well, if we go back then to the main C file, here we see if we put the button, if we push the button, then we will set the semaphore. That means that we will increase it with one. So then it says finally you push the button and it will continue here and it says use the button pressed so we will see that also on the printf. And when it does that it I also then just take out this status field and I printf the value of the, uh, the semaphore. And then I go to sleep and the reason for this is if I don't do that we won't be able to see the LED to indicate that it's been pressed. So after a half a second uh, we will reset the LED and so it will be turning off and then it will come back here and waiting for the next time we will uh, press the button again. So this is the demo and uh, we try to build it. So the build finished with zero warnings and uh, we tried to debug it. So now the debugger has started so we can just try to run the project. We can see in the Terraterm that uh, uh, we have communication waiting for the user button to be pressed to set the semaphore. And uh, if I then press uh, and, and we can also see that we have two tasks running. We have the green LED and uh, we have the yellow LED. Those are running in each one of each task and uh, the third task is uh, then handling the red LED. But that is, doesn't do anything because it's waiting for us to press the button. So if I press now the button, uh, I will get an interrupt because I put an interrupt or breakpoint on row 4 or 7. And that is the HAL GPI or external interrupt uh, rising edge. So as soon as I press that button I, I came here. So what we will do here, if we just single step, we will uh, toggle on the LED. So that what is now what we can see. Uh, the other two LEDs are not running anymore because we are in a, in a, in a break mode. But what we also can see that uh, now we set the semaphore. So the semaphore will get the value one. And uh, as soon as we then run the code again, the uh, task free then gets released and it put this uh, this text on on the screen that the user button is pressed and the current value is zero. Uh, so if we delete that breakpoint, and we just run the code. And we see now the yellow and the green one is, we can see that the LED 2 is, or LED 3 is uh, just turning up, but as soon as I'm releasing it, it will uh, be back again. And if I'm very fast, we can actually see the current value is more than zero. And that is the reason for its accounting value. So each time I press it, it will uh, increase the, the semaphore with one and each time then the th uh, thread free gets uh, 
uh, run, then it decreases it by one. So that is the counting function on it. Um, so that is why if I press several times, you can see it increases. So now I have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So it decreases it again. So that is the, um, as long as it's more than one, uh, more than zero, then it will uh, be able to take one uh, semaphore and uh, continue its code. And uh, what it does then is just to write this code on, on the screen. We can do a bit more on, on the debugging as well. If we go up under, under window, and we can go under show view. We have a, a, a menu alternative called ThreadX there, where we can tick for several things. But if we tick on the thread list and the semaphores, uh, we will get them down here. So if we start with a thread list and we break the code here, uh, we can see all the threads that we have. We have the LD1, LD2, and LD3. And we can see which uh, state they are in. They all share the same priority. And we also have a, a, a fourth one that's called a system uh, timer thread. And then there is the idle one. Reset everything and we run the code again. And we let it have a bit of time. I haven't pushed a button yet. You can see it's uh, just run once because it's just run once and then it waits forever until I push the button again. So it will be stuck there. So if we just run it a bit more and then we pause it again, we can see that the other task, they have increased the number of counts, but the, the uh, LD3, that is still waiting for me to push the button. So this one is suspended and uh, the reason for it suspended is the semaphore zero. It's, it's waiting for that one. We can also take a look in, uh, in this one, the uh, FredX semaphores. And here we have one semaphore that we have set and that is uh, zero and that is suspending the LD3. So LD3 is waiting for it to be uh, released. So that was something with the semaphores and uh, I hope that you uh, now have a bit more insight on uh, the semaphores on uh, ThreadX. I uh, hope you liked it and, um, and if you did please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you're not a subscriber please subscribe. You have the round button beneath me so uh, just subscribe there and if you have any comments please do so in, in the chat. So until I see you next time stay safe.